Janan, as an old neuroscientist, I was always interested in the mind-body problem. And uh, some neuroscientists would claim that the brain and the mind, not only is the mind derivative from the brain entirely, but they are literally the same thing, that they're just two ways of expressing the same concept. As a philosopher, as a scientist as well, do you agree with that? The question of whether the mind and brain are the same thing depends on what you mean by same. There are certainly different descriptions, and there are different ways of describing an object, one from a first-person point of view and one from a third-person point of view. And if you think about physical space, right, we see physical space in one way, in a way that's implicitly relativized to our own, our own position in it. But we can also describe physical, physical space from a third-person point of view. Um, and those will look like very different descriptions. They'll have different contents, they'll have different implications for, for perception and for action. I tend to think that something like those different points of view on a single object is the right way to understand the relationship between mind and brain. But that seems to uh, really eliminate mind as a real thing, because we know the brain is a real thing. We can see the neurons firing. We can see the chemicals floating across uh, synapses between the neurons. So that we know is real. And if we're saying that the mind is just another description of that, uh, it would seem to uh, eliminate the mind as an independent thing. I think that's right. I mean, I think something that comes closest to what I think would be saying that the mind is a kind of virtual machine running on the brain. So let's, what does that mean? It means that there's a higher level of description of the, of the brain um, that effectively, to use uh, um, a, an analogy that pe many people use in this context and that's very familiar now, I think, um, in, in the popular imagination, it's a kind of program that runs on brain hardware. Some would say that's a category mistake, that you are calling neuronal impulses, little firings of electrical activity, the same things as beautiful shawls. Our notion of same is incredibly elastic. Define, in the philosopher's terminology, define a cri criterion of identity, and now you have a notion of sameness. So we can say same with respect to such and such, but not same with respect to so-and-so. I can say, you know, you and I are wearing the same color on our on um, of pants, um, but we're not wearing the same pants. That's because they're equivalent in one respect, but not equivalent in another. And so I don't I don't think there's a contradiction there. I think minds and brains are the same system under one you no know, one criterion of identity, but not the same under. <clears throat> if we look at the molecules of water and H2O and how they all work and study that, and then we see a flowing stream or a glass of water. Uh, we know that there, those are radically different descriptions, but they really are descriptions of the same thing. Does your approach to brain and mind the same as the description to water and H2O? Yes. So, that, so there's no difference between the brain and the mind and between H2O and water. There's a difference in criteria of, um, in sort of dynamical criteria. When you describe over time the behavior of the brain, um, it can be different from the brain behavior of the mind because what you're counting as the same over time is going to be different in those two cases. So a familiar example that philosophers talk about sometimes is the statue in the clay. Right? Um, if you describe it at one time, the statue is nothing over and above the lump of clay that it's made of. But of course, you can destroy the statue without destroying the clay. <laughs> so uh, w which is which in that case, and how do they, uh, and, and what does that mean for the mind? Okay. The mind is the brain in a certain arrangement and obeying certain kinds of dynamical laws. And the fact that we have this inner phenomenal or inner feeling in the mind, in, in, our, in our perception, uh, is, that, uh, is that part of your calculus? That question is above my pay grade. <laughs> I genuinely don't know the answer to that question. It's one of the hardest questions that I've struggled with for a long time. I genuinely don't know. And do you have any idea how you could possibly know? 
Sometimes I think I have glimmers of an idea about it, and sometimes it just seems genuinely beyond my capacity.